Hi, and welcome back to the Food Fund, where we explore all things related to investing in food and beverage stocks. If you are new here, our goal is to help you put your money where your mouth is and invest in great companies. If you love food and love stocks, you will definitely love this channel. In this video we will be doing an analysis of Shake Shack and seeing if it would be a great addition to the Food Fund. Be sure to watch through the end of the video where I share my final thoughts on that. Now, let's go ahead and jump right in. Cue the logo. Let's start with some background info on Shake Shack. Shake Shack is popular burger chain that was founded in New York City in 2004 by Danny Mayer, a well-known restaurateur. Shake Shack quickly became a popular destination for locals and tourists alike and went public in 2015. Today, Shake Shack has over 270 locations in the United States, Canada, Europe, and Asia. Now let's take a look at its price action. Starting with the 1 year chart we see that Shake Shack had a cager of about 28%. Zooming out to the 5 year chart we see that Shake Shack had a cager of 4%. Shake Shack price action has been very volatile over the years. Now, let's take a look at the fundamentals. Gross margin is 36%. This is pretty solid. Revenue has compounded at around 19% over the past 5 years and has reached nearly $991 million most recently. Good revenue growth and good gross margins make for a great restaurant company. Looking at free cash flow we see a minus 108% cager over the last 5 years, while capex has increased at a cager of 15%. Stock based compensation is increasing at around a 21% cager. Looking closer we see that Shake Shack lost $58 million in the most recent trailing 12 months while spending $162 million on capex and $14 million on stock based compensation. Shake Shack needs to get their spending under control. Weighted average shares outstanding have been increasing at about a 7% cager. Going from 29.2 million shares in 2018 to 39.3 million shares most recently, Shake Shack has been aggressively diluting shareholders though this seems to have slowed from 2021 onwards. Now let's view return on invested capital. Return on invested capital has decreased from 5.1% in 2018 to minus 3.3% in 2023. This is the opposite of what we want to see. Shake Shack is becoming less efficient as time goes on. Next, let's look at cash conversion cycle, a measure of operational efficiency regarding supplier and payer leverage as well as inventory control. Going from minus 8 days in 2018 to minus 2 days most recently, Shake Shack has gotten a comparatively less efficient. While the negative cash conversion cycle indicates that the company still maintains a good degree of operating leverage, the trend is strongly in the wrong direction. Last, let's explore Shake Shack's debt. The net debt to EBITDA is decent at 2.9 and has been pretty level since 2020. For me, Shake Shack's debt level is not an issue. The fundamentals of Shake Shack are not great, but it does have much growth ahead, in any event. Should it be added to the portfolio? Before sharing my final thoughts on that, please click the like button and let YouTube know that you like the content. Subscribe and click the notification bell to make sure you catch the latest videos. Your continued support means so much to the food fund. Now, let's get into my final thoughts. Okay, let's go to the spreadsheet and write out some key values for Shake Shack. It is a restaurant company with a gross margin of 36%. The 5 year revenue per share cager is 10% and the 5 year free cash flow per share cager is reported to be minus 95%. A return on invested capital of minus 3% is bad and getting worse. Next, the cash conversion cycle of minus 2 days is not bad but it had been trending higher indicating worsening efficiency. Concerning debt, a net debt to EBITDA of 2.9 means that Shake Shack could pay off all of their debts with a little less than 3 years of earnings. So from a fundamental standpoint, Shake Shack has a few holes. Now let's switch our attention over to valuation. As an unprofitable company Shake Shack is unable to be valued relative to the S&P 500. Likewise, the price to earnings growth, or PEG ratio, is incalculable due to the unprofitable nature of Shake Shack. To wrap it up, Shake Shack has enjoyed great revenue growth. However, they have been pretty bad at managing costs. 
repeatedly diluted shareholders, and are growing more inefficient every year. For these reasons, and despite their really tasty burgers, I will forego adding it to the watch list but do look forward to revisiting the restaurant in the future. Many thanks for watching. What do you think about Shake Shack and its lack of free cash flow growth? Please share your thoughts below. It is always great to hear from you. Please check out some more videos right now and don't forget to put your money where your mouth is.